Alright, let's turn to 1 John. 1 John chapter number 4. We'll look at God is love. Man. Often overlooked in sovereign grace circles that we talk so much of election and reprobation and judgment and wrath and righteousness and holiness that we feel like we're compromising liberals if we talk about the love of God, but nonetheless, God is love. Amen. And that is true. And the Bible says, He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. Amen. So the Lord will help us this morning. I want to teach on the love of God is revealed in the Scriptures. Heavenly Father, we thank you for all that you've done, Lord. I pray you bless this time of teaching. We thank you for your blessings. We thank you for your love. Holy Father, we thank you. God, I pray that you'd make it so clear to us through your word. Help us now, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. So God's love does not compromise his holiness or his righteousness or his justice or any of those things. So Amen. God is not in parts. It's not like he's two parts holiness and a part and a half of love and this, that, and the other, but God is who He is. Amen. And so He is who He is constantly, and all these attributes of God work together, and none compromise the other. You're right. So God's love does not compromise His holiness. It does not jeopardize justice or wrath. Amen. He is both holy, He's love, He's righteous, He's merciful, He's just and gracious, etc. The list goes on and on and on. And he is all these things at all times. Let us, in an effort to avoid confusion, let's clearly figure out what the Scriptures say about the love of God. Uh, first, this morning, we're going to talk a lot about the love of God as it is towards His people. I realize that, number one, first and foremost, God loves Himself. God has Amen. always loved Himself from eternity past. God didn't have to create human beings, so He had an object for His love. He was just so lonely, so now He's decided to create people. But before man was, God always loved himself perfectly. Mm -hmm. The Father has loved the Son before the foundation of the world. The Son loved the Father. The Father loved Amen. the Holy Spirit and so on and so forth. So first, the love of God is not shallow. It's not wavering. It's not thoughtless. It's not the love of here today, gone tomorrow. Right. If you do good enough, well, you get a little more love. And now you've sinned today, so now you get a little less portion of love. But God's love is perfect. Amen. It's not simple. It's not lighthearted sentiment. What is God's love? Well, we'll look at that. Let's let's look in the scriptures. First of all, let's consider two texts. First John, chapter number one, verse number five. The Bible says, This then is the message that we have heard of him, and declare unto you that God is light. And in him is no darkness at all. Amen. When we read that alongside of, he that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. What does this show to us? First of all, we see that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. Starts off there. So what is darkness? But darkness is a picture or a type or it shows wickedness. Amen. It shows evil. It shows ignorance. Well, God has no darkness in him, but he's light. What does light show on the other hand? Light signifies holiness, purity, justice, truth. So God is these things. God is light, and in him is no darkness at all. Amen. And then we get into this. He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. So what is love? Love must be viewed inside of the light of holiness mm -hmm. so that we don't fall into the errors of those that are easy believers or Arminian that would say that God loves everyone and has a great plan for you. And if you'll just talk to him in prayer, prayer, then everything's good. And it doesn't matter what happens. God just loves you so much. You can't get enough of you. Mm -hmm. And so in the light of holiness, let us view these teachings. The love of God, as we said, is not shallow, but very deep, very true. Mm -hmm. Why he loves us in himself. God doesn't overlook sin for the sake of love. God does not even overlook the sin of his own people. Amen. And never has, never has. He's holy. Hebrews 12 states that God chastises those that he loves. And Amen. even deeper than that, we look at John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And so in order for God to have a holy and righteous love for his people, 
without, without jeopardizing justice, without jeopardizing wrath, God gave His Son. Amen. And so He loves us, but He loves us in uh, a, a holy way. So He loves us and He gave His Son for us. And there was a substitutionary atonement paid for those who would believe. Amen. And so that's not a, a shallow love, but that's a deep love. God did not overlook sin for the love God gave His Son. His flesh, His Son came in the flesh under the wrath of God. Condemnation was on Him in Amen. our behalf. Just and the justifier of all those that believe. See then, beloved, there is no unrighteousness in the love of God. There's not a stitch of unrighteousness. There's no unholiness. There's no nastiness. There's Amen. no injustice in the love of God. But everything works together divinely. In the light of God's attributes of greatness, then without compromising any of that, we see the love of God that He really and truly has for His people. Mm -hmm. When we talk about God's love, He really truly is love. You're right. Not right. just some like feely thing, like emotional nonsense, Amen. but He really truly loves us. Amen. Amen. The love of God, in fact, is the guarantee that all things work together for good to them that love God to those who are the called according to His purpose. You're right. If He loves us, we know then that no matter what happens, it's going to be good. Ephesians 2, verse number 4. Ephesians 2, verse number 4. We see some driving force here. But God, who is rich in mercy, for His great love, wherewith He loved us, Amen. even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ. By grace ye are saved. Amen. And so according to the good pleasure of His will, according as He has loved us, He has redeemed us from our sin. So it's not this emotional thing. It's not some like thoughtless, just worthless sentiment. Right. But it is a deep love. Uh -huh. An actual love. An actual something that, that means something. It's a love that means something. That he, he loves us in Christ. As much as we're in Christ, He loves us. So let's look at four aspects of God's love. God's love, first of all, is eternal. Amen. Jeremiah 31.3 says that I have loved you with an everlasting love. Therefore, with loving kindness have I drawn you. We are drawn to God. Why? Because of that everlasting love. Mm -hmm. He has loved us with an everlasting love, and therefore with loving kindness He draws us. What comfort is in this text that it's an everlasting love? It's not a merited love, as some would say. It's not a deserved love. It's not something that we can earn. It's not something that we work towards. It's not something that we add to. Amen. It's not that God looked down through eternity past and saw me and said, Well, Jackson... He's just done something so grand and so good that he's just worth saving and worth loving. But quite on the opposite end, that he yeah. saw me as a vile sinner. Amen. And by his grace alone, to the good pleasure of his will, his own counsels, he placed his love on me. Mm -hmm. Amen. A deep and undeserved love that even then, knowing that he was going to give his son, that he gave his son in our stead. An everlasting love. What comfort it is to the child that has been born again. Amen. Mm. What, what, what grace and what peace that speaks to our heart no matter what's going on. Amen. So if you've been drawn by the Holy Spirit of God, guess what? You are loved with an everlasting love. Mm -hmm. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about that. God does love you and has loved you from the beginning before the foundation of the world. He loves you and bought you with a price, the high price of the death of His only begotten Son Amen. upon the cross of Calvary. We don't go off feelings. You know, sometimes I don't feel love. Sometimes I don't feel like everything's going all right. Yeah. You know, sometimes when we go through trials and tribulation and distresses, it doesn't feel very good. Right. And it doesn't feel like anyone could love you, especially God. Yeah. But we don't go off feelings. That's it. We go off the Word of God. What Amen. does the Word Amen. say? And the Word says, because He's loved us with an everlasting love, He's drawn us with love and kindness. And the Bible says all over that He loves us. Amen. And that doesn't make you a compromiser to say that makes you honest. He loves us. Mm -hmm. With a deep, sincere love. Amen. Mm -hmm. An undeserved love. 
a love that we can't wrap our little finite minds around. Amen. That He loves us. And He loves us as much as we're united with Christ. Mm -hmm. We've been united with Him in election, of course, and then upon conversion, but we've always been loved at the moment of, of election, before the foundation of the world. He loved His Amen. Son before the foundation of the world, and therefore He loves us in His Son. What am I saying? There's not a thing we can do to get away from that. He loves Amen. His people. This love is everlasting that it was not merited. Romans 5 and verse number 8 says, God commended His love toward us and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We did not merit before Jacob or Esau had done any good or any bad. He loved Jacob. Amen. Before you had done anything, before you were born, before you thought of by your parents, God had loved you. There's an unmerited everlasting love. But lastly and really most importantly on talking about the eternality of God's love, God has always loved Himself and the three persons of the Holy Trinity. We won't spend as much time here. I want to get through this. We have a few pages, so we'll look at a few proof texts and you can write these down. But John 3, verse 35. And if you don't turn there, you can write it down, whatever you feel necessary. John 3 and verse 35. The scriptures say, The Father loveth the Son, and hath given all things into His hand. Amen. You turn over to John 17 and 24, you'll see this verse here. <clears throat> Father, I will that they also whom Thou hast given me be with me where I am, mm -hmm. that they may behold my glory which Thou hast given me, for Thou lovest me, Jesus before the foundation of the world. Amen. Luke 3 and verse 22. And I know we're flipping around a bunch of proof texts. I don't want to say something and you take the word for it. And the Holy Ghost descended in a bodily shape like a dove upon him. And a voice came from heaven which said, Thou art my beloved Son. In thee I am well pleased. John 15, 9, Isaiah 42, all throughout the scriptures, there's multiple verses that we could turn to that prove that God has always loved himself and not in a, a way that would be like we love ourselves and proud and arrogant, but God has every right to love himself. He's perfect and he does Amen. it in a perfect and a holy way. And so he's always loved himself. So God has never been without love. This is not something, again, to, to emphasize this point. This is not something that God learned in the creation of Adam. Amen. God has always been loved. And God will always be loved. Amen. And that, that's just who God is. And it's, you can't separate this from God. Amen. So God is who he is. And you can't separate. That brings us into our next point. God's love is immutable. Mm -hmm. Just as God is immutable, he's unchanging. You can't change God. God doesn't change. And what he wills to do, he does. And no man can stay his hand. It just follows naturally that his love is immutable. Mm -hmm. His Amen. love is unchanging. Uh, you won't be loved by God today and then hated by him tomorrow and then loved the next day if you start doing right again. God's love is immutable. Amen. What comfort that is. I believe it's very necessary. Let's look at Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8, the verse... 28, the Bible says, and we know that all things work together for the good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to His purpose. Amen. For whom He did foreknow, He did also predestinate to be conformed to the image of His Son, mm -hmm. that He might be the firstborn among many brethren. Amen. Moreover, whom He did predestinate, them He also called. Whom He called, them He also justified. Whom He justified, them He also glorified. What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? Amen. He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifieth. Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died, yea, rather that is risen again. Who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us. Listen to this. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Amen. Shall tribulation or distress, or persecution or famine, or nakedness or peril, or sword? 
As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. Amen. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, Amen. which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. And so it's immutable. Amen. It's unchangeable. There's literally, there's not a single thing. And Paul here, by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, goes through death and life, the two like big extremes. Death is like the big end all, and people think death is the end of it. Death can't separate you from the love Amen. of God. Right. Life experiences and life itself can't separate you from the love of God. Nor angels or principalities. Amen. Nor powers. Nor things present. Nor things to come. Yeah. There's literally nothing, and he goes from extreme to extreme. And if that wasn't enough, he says, nor height, nor depth. And then he says this one, which just destroys the whole argument for how uh, you can lose your salvation. Amen. He says, nor any other creature. Right. Beloved, Amen. today, if you're saved by the grace of God, you're a creature, and you cannot separate yourself from the love of God. There's nothing then that separates us from his love. Amen. In Christ Jesus. In Christ Jesus. And so his love is immutable and unchanging. The shallow view of God's love from easy believers would be that you earn it, that it's changing, and it's ever up and down, and like you're in a relation with a hormonal teenage girl, and if you can please her enough, she'll be happy, but if you make her mad, she's not going to talk to you for three weeks. Right. And then we've dumbed it down to something like that, and that's not God they're talking about. That's that's blasphemy. That's, that's stupidity. Mm -hmm. yeah. And they create these gods after their own imagination, and they name them the God of the Bible, but He's not Jehovah. The God of the Bible doesn't change. Amen. Yeah. He's not hormonal. He's not temperamental like this where he's just flipping about everything. We can take very strong hope and assurance in the fact that God's love does not change. Amen. And so no matter what we go through, trust God. Trust God. Don't shy away from this glorious truth. Amen. Just preach it rightly. Teach it rightly. Yeah. Tell people, but teach it rightly. Mm -hmm. In the light of God's holiness. And that leads us now into God's love as sovereign. What's meant by this? Well, God as sovereign, meaning the supreme ruler, the, the supreme being over everything. He's sovereign. He makes up his own mind. He does what he wills. He has no obligation to love or show mercy to anyone. Amen. He told Moses, he said, I'll have mercy on who I'll have mercy, and I'll have compassion on who I'll have compassion. But he doesn't say that about justice. Justice is earned. He is just. He will be just. Condemnation is deserved. Wrath is deserved. We've earned that. Any, any sins that we commit against the thrice holy God, we have uh, made that our bed, and we'll lay in it. Mm -hmm. We deserve wrath. We deserve judgment. But love is sovereign. Mm -hmm. Love is by choice. Mm -hmm. And we don't say that to blow ourselves up in pride like, look at me, God loves me, I'm so, somebody special. No, it's not choice based on future foresight of no. foreseen events of you doing good. It's just by God's obligation, or by God's desire and wills and purposes Romans 9 18 therefore hath he mercy on whom he will and who and whom he will he hardeneth again talking back to Moses uh, we've often been charged with this foolishness that well why doesn't God save everyone why doesn't God just save everyone and that's that's the charge that's like that's like oh I got you now Friend, if, if we took your thoughts and your life mm -hmm. and everything you had thought, everything you had done, everything you looked at, everything you'd done in your, in your life, and we displayed it in front of Dover, you would move out of this county and you would never show your face again. Right. Amen. And you realize that God sees all of it anyway. <clears throat> and that when we're sinning, we're not sinning against each other. We're sinning against God. 
And so the real honest question is why is God merciful to anybody? Even one. And that brings us back to love and grace. Mm -hmm. Love and grace. Not that we deserve it, not that we're owed it, but love and grace. What separates us from the the elect from the reprobate? Only the grace of God. You got it. Only a sovereign and free love and grace. God's love is effectual, number four. Yes. God's love is effectual. To those that would believe in these other uh, forms of God's love that they believe are just so great and amazing, they leave out a very important part of God's love, that God's love is effectual. Mm -hmm. What do we mean by that? We love Him because He first loved us. He was effective in us. God's love brings an inner desire for holiness Mm -hmm. and, and righteousness to the folks that say, well, yeah, I'm, I'm saved and, and God really loves me and I, I'm, I'm saved. And I don't go to church and I don't really read my Bible and I don't desire holiness, but I, everything's okay. Mm. There's no desire for God in their life. There's no, that's right. There's nothing there. Yeah. You got it. Again, to the one that would say, yeah, I'm good to go. And they, they read the Bible, but only to check off these scriptural boxes. To say, okay, I read my Bible, check. Mm-hmm. I prayed, check. I've done this, check. I must be in a good standing, check. You know, I went to church today, check. Mm-hmm. I tithe, we're good to go. That's also, that's not that's not what we're talking about here. God's love being effectual drives us to a loving, heartfelt, sincere submission to His Lordship. Amen. To Him as King of kings and Lord of lords. God's love is effectual in changing the most vile and and wicked of God haters into someone that loves Him, Amen, and desires Him. And there there begins at that moment a lifelong desire to serve Him. Mm-hmm. Not only that, but to know Him. Do we read the Bible to know Him? Do we study to know Him? Do we serve Him because we love Him? I ask not if you're perfect or if you're practically speaking, if you're perfect, you never sin. I'm not asking that. What I want to ask you this morning, do you love God? That right there is a great evidence of whether or not you are His. John 4, or 1 John 4 and 7 says, Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. Again in verse 19, we love Him because He first loved us. Amen. And if you're if you don't love God, you're not born of God. Right. You are not yet hid. Amen. You're not born again. If you're born again, you're born of God, you love God. That's it. Very next verse, he that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. Mm-hmm. People love many things. People love families, sports, this, that, and the other. There's no problem in loving your family. That's a great thing. I love your family. I'm not saying that. You know, there's it's fine to have things that you love, but it's all meaningless if you don't love God. Amen. Every bit of it. doesn't matter what you love. doesn't matter what you did. Do you love God? Mm-hmm. Is your service because you love Him? What's the driving force in all that you do? Brother Larry, do you, you, you come to church to preach. Do you do it out of a, uh, and you don't have to answer, but out of a love for God? Right. Or is it, is it, well, I'm the pastor up here. It's time to get another paycheck. Let's just go, okay, let's go up here and preach. Brother, when you go out, but is it just a form of going through the, fo- the motions? Mm. Go. If we're His, we do it from a drive from inside that He's affected Amen. in us, that we love Him. Amen. So holy living and holiness is not legalism. It's true for believing faith. Mm-hmm. And it's affected by His love in us. Now, we've only barely scratched the surface. We've got to run here. I don't want to take over all the time. Uh, we'll look at a few. I want to look at a few manifestations of His love throughout the Scriptures. And we, we won't have to turn there, but John three sixteen, the world. Jesus told a Jew named Nicodemus that God so loved the world, Jew and Gentile, that whosoever believeth Jew or Gentile should be saved. Amen. That's a manifestation of God's love. Because God loved, He gave. Mm-hmm. Ephesians 5.25 uh, Husbands, love your wife even as Christ loved the church and gave Himself for it. 
Christ loved and He gave a, a, a visible manifestation of the love of God. In John chapter 10, we see how the Father loves His Son because His Son gives His life for the sheep. Jesus loves the sheep and He gives His life for them. Amen. Outpourings and manifestations of the love of God. Isaiah 42, the Father shows His love to His Son. He says, Behold my servant, mine elect, in whom I am well pleased. And then he goes from there and he talks about his son, how he's coming in his redemptive work and how he's going to go to the cross and he's going to die on the cross for Amen. sinners. That's his outpouring of his love. He's showing in the Old Testament even his love for his people. Amen. His love for his son. The love of God is on full display in Isaiah 53. Amen. 1 John 3, 1. Listen to this. Behold, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. Amen. Therefore the world knoweth us not, because it knew Him not. Right. Behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us. Another outpouring and manifestation of the love of God that's true and sincere and real. We'll, we'll close here in Romans 8. Romans 8. I see our time fleeting away from us. Romans 8. Verse number 12, Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh to live after the flesh. For if you live after the flesh, you shall die. But if ye through the Spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, ye shall live. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. Amen. What love. Mm -hmm. I want to give you a picture here. Uh, imagine uh, knowing a child that was in need of adoption, that was a poor little precious abused toddler, and you saw this child and you knew they needed somebody, and you decided to go up to them and help them out, and the child loved you and just wanted you, and you adopted them, and you fed them, and they obeyed you the rest of their life, and you just had a great time. That's the idea that people have of this adoption that's not the case God doesn't adopt little good boys and little good girls that were just in need of help he adopts those vile sinners as if he Amen. were to go to the very death chamber death row at the prison and pick out the vile sinner that was worthy of the death that he was about to die and even though the worthy of death sinner rebelled against God and hated God and did not want God he adopted him yeah. Amen that's the difference between the two views of love that we see. There's a correct view and there's a wrong view. Amen. And the wrong view says that you're just a poor little beggar, that uh, God's just waiting for you to come to Him, and He's just hoping and pleading, right. and He kind of loves you, but if you really do good, then He'll really love you. And then there's this view that we're unworthy sinners, mm -hmm. and we deserve hell, and God in His love redeemed us. Amen. I like that. Amen. Mm -hmm. I like that a whole lot. Mm -hmm. Because I know me. Mm -hmm. And you know you. Right. And if we're going to be honest about the scriptures, his love is definitely unmerited. Mm -hmm. It's eternal. Amen. Mm -hmm. It's unchanging. Mm -hmm. It's undeserved. Lastly, in his love, we see in Hebrews 12, 6 through 11, I won't turn there. We see that it doesn't end with salvation. He chastises those he loves. Amen. And if you're without chastisement, you're not a son but a bastard. You're, you're without the Father. Right. Without the Father. So he loves us enough to save us and to keep us from falling. Amen. To keep us the whole way. I do appreciate your attention. This is just very surface. I hope it's like a diving board that you your your hearts have been excited and now you want to go deep. Deep, deep into the subject. Amen. And I pray that you'll go home and study this further. Amen. And that we'll sincerely consider the love of this glorious God that we're worshiping this morning. Amen. Amen. Towards unworthy sinners. Heavenly Father, we thank you for another opportunity to be here. We thank you for this service. Pray that you would use this message to teach us, Lord, of your love and to refresh our memories, God, of the love that you have towards us. We wouldn't shy away from this topic. Hell, how it's needed, God. We need to know this. Father, help your people in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.